New World Season 4 patch notes are here and some very big things that you're going to want to pay attention to contained within. The PTR will be going live tomorrow and this is what's inside. This season is called the Eternal Frost, it's coming to the PTR tomorrow and it has all the stuff that they talk about when they do a PTR, how do you get access, all that kind of stuff and these are the things that they want you to test. The new dungeon, the new artifacts, the narrative, the reward track, weapon balance, the winter convergence, legacy of Crassus and the inventory improvements. I don't know if there's going to be another cycle of this PTR. I don't know if there's anything left that's not tested. Maybe there will be, maybe there won't. I don't know. Now, as ever, these patch notes, they're quite extensive. Now, this isn't the biggest one we've ever seen, but there are quite a lot of patch notes. I'm going to pick out the highlights and we'll talk about them. If I miss anything really major, let me know in the comments. The first one I want to pick out is that they've lowered the amount of ancients needed for the mechanic artifact quest to account for the decreased decrease numbers on the bridge. Basically, it asks you to kill, I think, ancients on the bridge and there's like four spawns. And it's pretty silly. I think Molnir does the same, but no mention of that here. Now, there is quite a few changes being made to navigation, but if I'm honest, I don't really know how this is going to impact. Basically, you now move at the same speed in all directions when not sprinting. Now, you sprint most of the time, but there are some times where you don't. So when you do like an attack or when you shoot the musket or something like that, there's generally a little bit of a slowdown and there must be somehow, some way, a variance there. Now the professional PVPers will probably know already what this means. Never really bothered me, never really something I've noticed, but they're basically changing that. And they're actually increasing the non-sprint speed from, well, whatever, to four meters per second. And they've improved the player animation when entering sprints from a backward dodge. All right, cool. The worm is getting some changes. So basically acid damage is now going to be counted as elemental damage, which basically means elemental aversion will be relevant, I think. And they're also changing some of the damage. I don't really understand this. I haven't done the worm since. I don't know if they're making them stronger or weaker. The worm at the minute is only really worth doing for the dark matter. Blocking is being buffed. Two big things here. You can now block and aim when you have a weapon sheathed. So basically you're going to unsheath, I think. I often find myself trying to block with a melee weapon or aim with my bow and nothing happens. And it's because my weapon is sheathed and then I have to unsheath my weapon to make it happen. I'm like, ah, oh, it's a bit frustrating. They're eliminating that, which should be good. They are also updating the heavy attack buffer windows to make triggering back to back heavy attacks more consistent. This is a buff to me with Serenity when I'm in my heavy boy build and I'm just smacking people because sometimes I'll try and do a heavy attack and it just won't trigger. They've added functionality that will reduce block stamina damage taken for a short duration after blocking an attack to help scale stamina damage taken in group fights. This is a buff to basically any tanky boy or tanky girl in outpost rush kind of thing. Now if you block an attack you will then do like you'll take less stamina damage the next time so your stamina stamina will be more effective and blocking is just more effective i wonder if that will be a massive buff to something like the wall and beyond that they're also reducing the player's block break reaction from 30 frames to 15 frames so i think this is like when you get block broken you sort of like stagger around they're shortening that time by half basically a lot of the block stability and stamina changes i think they're basically just bringing the weapons together so the ones that are very strong they're nerfing and the ones that are weak they're buffing interesting changes we'll see if this makes blocking even stronger two consumable changes one more interesting than the other first they've removed the ability to consume uh, consumables from your inventory when in combat but more importantly you may know that in the expansion they basically made it so potions did less healing in PvP. That has been removed. Your potions will be back to full health. Endless Thirst could be very interesting now. Speaking of artifacts, there's a couple of interesting things here as well. Odo was not... They fixed an issue with Odo, so its damage will now actually increase to stun targets. Yikes, that's a buff. They removed the strike damage conversion from the Inferno Fire Staff and the Life Taker Void Gauntlet. The Fire Staff will do fire damage and the void will do void damage as well that's basically a buff to the fire staff because that that fire staff the artifact was just simply not getting used because it wasn't very good ank has got another nerf basically ank will now also decrease lifesteal healing which if you do any kind of life stealing will be less strong i mean it's a nerf but you know if they feel like it's needed fair enough the blood drinker artifact has now got five percent bonus to all lifesteal so that could be very interesting right this next section i don't really fully understand and we probably need need well we do i need it at least a jukes off video to explain this to me i don't get it there are some changes to some rune glasses many different types some of them are a little bit of buff some of them are a little bit nerf the one that i want to specifically call out is the gambit opal because this was by far the most used gem 
The reduced damage values from 6% to 15% to a range of 4% to 12% while stamina is not full. Basically, it's going to do less damage. There's some other changes there, but, um, you know, I, I don't really use these necessarily. These are sort of like self-explanatory, but the bit that I truly don't understand is the gem conversion. My chat told me that there'll be no point using tier 2 gems now. I don't really fully understand it. I think the scaling is now always going to be off int or focus and it won't now be like your weapon damage or int or focus. So if you put a conversion gem on a weapon, 50% of that damage will convert to either 60, 70 or 80 or 90, depending on the tier of gem. They will not dual scale. All right, like I don't, beyond that, I don't really fully understand it. I'm not going to lie. However, something that is a buff to some of the artifacts is that they've removed the incompatible elemental perk. So basically... Uh, from gems i should say so basically if there is like mjolnir or even that bolt uh, the bolt caster you should now be able to put any kind of gem on it there'll now be no issues there which is good because it's a little bit awkward there's some uh, mostly fixes to some weapons i just want to quickly call out this spear specifically because that is actually just a straight up nerf not a massive one but basically they've reduced the cooldown from the javelins refreshing precision upgrade from 50 percent to 25 percent Generally speaking, I'm thinking that's aimed at the Scorpion Sting because that's obnoxious, so they've nerfed it a little bit. Couple of changes to some of the Live Staff perks. Basically, it means that these perks will now not apply to consumables or life stealing. If I'm honest, I'm way too excited about this one, but they are actually raising the Azov cap from 1,000 to 2,500. It's about time. Maybe they should raise the uh, gold cap from maybe 500,000 to 750,000. Although saying that, I think a lot of people are experiencing a lack of gold right now. Now, we don't fully understand what this one, uh, like we don't know what changes they're fully making here, basically. So uh, um, they've adjusted the odds of the reward track, the PvP reward track, including making artifacts more likely to appear at rank 200. Apparently, if you were rank 200, you were sort of like hindered in getting them, which obviously doesn't make any sense, but we don't know what else they're changing. I'm guessing they're just going to make the rewards better because that seems to be a bit of a theme here. Now, just while we're on the idea of artifacts, one thing I have not seen is any indication about bad luck prevention. That was actually mentioned in a Discord Q&A, but I'm not seeing it here in the patch notes. The artifacts that were on the season pass are now going to be in the game. Interestingly, Endless Thirst is going into the Savage Divide and the Tumble of Feet Wraps are going into Outpost Rush Caches. Worth noting that you can't get them twice if you already have one. We are getting some big changes to mainly Outpost Rush Rewards and Arena is actually just getting nerfed. So they are improving the Outpost Rush Rewards by guaranteeing that items given as a result of participation are loot bias. Now, loot biasing is a little bit, you know, questionable in some ways. It'd be nice if you could turn that on and off, but that's one way they're improving it. They are also now increasing the gear score that these drop at because getting like three boxes of like six six seven or something like that is just a little bit sad so hopefully they should make gearing with pvp a little bit better they go on to explain that 3v3s are too rewarding basically so they have to nerf arena but they're also buffing wars and outpost rush effectively if you're trying to level your reward track it was quicker to do arenas than anything else they're changing that this will make the quality of competition in arena a little bit better but there'll be less people doing it i guess if they're going to make us do outpost rush they should make a solo queue Quite simply, I'm sick of pre-mades and Arena, at least you know you're only going to go against two, whereas in Outpost Rush you could literally be going against uh, effectively four or five pre-mades. So for me, like this is a good change, but we really need to look at matchmaking, honestly, at this point. It's getting a bit ridiculous. There's no fun solo queue casual PvP, and I find that a little bit insane. Anyway, what they are doing is that if you hit the max contribution, you're going to get 5,000 PvP reward track and 4,000 as of salt. I don't know why they say salts, but there you go. You're also going to hit 20 dark matter as well instead of, I think, maybe like 16 or 14. They're increasing the dark matter. And they're basically nerfing the arena to 1,200 and 500 salt. One thing that I'm very happy about is that they are buffing the influence race reward caches so that they will also roll at a higher gear score. Because again, opening them and getting purples just felt really sad didn't really feel any like incentive to actually do them myself apart from when I needed to unlock them for my artifacts. They also give you dark matter which is nice. The expansion aptitude chest will no longer drop depreciated perks. I'm not sure if this is going to change aptitude overall. I sort of wish they would make adamant a little bit easier to get but nothing in these patch notes right now. Once we hit the Dana mine and stuff like that we'll have a talk about that. Then there are some changes to crafting and this first one is pretty big. 
Uh, when we were doing this on stream, a lot of people went ahead and bought these recipes and patterns and music sheets, myself included, because we don't really know like how much XP they're going to give us. But let me just read it. Basically, they've added the ability to do research projects. These projects are designed to consume those extra recipes, those patterns and the music sheets. They say that you have lying around. I'll tell you where mine are. Mine are on the floor long since destroyed. But now you can convert them and they'll grant bonus XP to the corresponding trade skill. So basically, with the music sheets will be a slightly easy way of doing music without actually doing music. So that's good. It should also buff the value of these a little bit. So yeah, very good change here. They're basically changing the way that heart runes are upgraded. No mention about removing dark matter, but maybe they will do that. They say they're lowering the overall resource requirement, which I think makes sense. It was a little bit too insane. Apparently, they've added the descriptions to where the items drop for some things which are very cool. I like that. I think the MMO should do that a little bit more so you don't have to check external websites. However, New World Database is by far the best website. So if you do check anything, then you want to check it there. It looks like prismatic scarabs are going to be a little bit cheaper to craft, or at least in terms of Azoth, I should say. And the last one I don't really understand. The Arcana trade skill used to make a jewelry matrix, now makes an armor matrix. I mean, at the Arcana station, it already does make an armor matrix. I don't understand this one. It is what it is. So there's going to be more mithril in the future because basically they're, um, they're temporarily adjusting the drop rates of mithril ore or the drop amounts, I should say, until they place more in the world. This is this is wrong. Mithril's not really the hardcore bottleneck right now. The problem is Orichalcum again. They should do this, but for Orichalcum, I think. This one also caused a bit of a panic on Barry. Basically, players can now prospect either silver, gold or platinum ore to create a cache of gems. This could mean that gems are going to go down or it could mean that platinum ore and this kind of stuff is going to go up. We don't really know. Might be a bit early to bulk buy it, but platinum ore very quickly went off the market in Barry. Some overall positive changes to mounts. Nothing crazy, but basically, you know, it now shows the name of the mount when you actually mount it up. Some just UI customization and that kind of stuff like you can actually mount when you are in the mount screen. Some good stuff, but nothing crazy. We saw this one from the dev video, but they're increasing the amount of Gleamite meteorites falling from the sky in comparison to the last winter event. This will be cool. The last winter event, uh, well, the next winter event should be really good to farm. PVPers might be happy with this one or not, it depends who you are. Influence races will now be rescheduled if they are active during server maintenance. If I'm honest, there's nothing truly like revolutionary here, but there's a lot of little things that sort of amount to it being a decent patch. The main things are probably, you know, this Azov cap might also be the changes to like Outpost Rush. I don't know if Arena really needed the nerf. I, like, I'm a little bit unsure about that one. I don't think it really needed the nerf. I sort of liked the way that it was, but obviously Outpost Rush possibly could have done with the buff. War, I'm not really doing it anyway. But yeah, I think overall this is a sort of W. The whole content of the patch, I mean, I do still think that that's a little bit underwhelming, but we'll talk more about that after we've actually seen what's on the PTR. For now, I'll leave the link to this in the description below. If you want to actually come and watch me play this on the PTR, I'll be doing a very long stream tomorrow. We'll be starting very early and going long because we're waiting for the PTR and we'll be playing it over on Twitch. Make sure you go and give me a follow. I've just hit over 9,000 followers. Be nice if we could get to 10k soon. And a big shout out to my Patreons. You guys really make doing this thing like all full time a little bit easier. So very much appreciate you guys. Thank you very much to you. What I hope you do now is have a most beautiful day. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.